the Network Information Center, which is located at Stanford Research Institute in California, sees the network as this multi-leveled experiment in resource sharing, where the resources available are people, computers, data. At one level, you've got the technology that's implementing the network, the circuits that send the bits from place to place. At another level, you've got the protocols and procedures that allow data to be shared, computers to talk to each other, and so forth. And at other levels, you've got the facilities which allow people to get together who are geographically dispersed and allow them to work together and find out information, resources, and so forth that they need to do their job and bring them together. So we see our job as twofold. One, to provide information about resources, about people, about the network that people need to bring these things together to do their job. And then once they've gotten together these, these things, particularly groups of people, we'd like to provide services that will aid their collaboration and their working together. The success of a network will depend by and large how the user views it. You have to give the user a, something more than he gets at the present time, otherwise he's not, not going to be particularly interested in the network, and there are lots of political problems associated with that. He presently has a computer center. The computer center, by and large, uh, provides some kind of service for him. The people who run the computers, computer center uh, are going to continue to want to operate in that mode. Uh, as far as the economic aspects are concerned, various computer centers would presumably become expert in some area and provide some kind of resource that would be useful to all the others, and they could concentrate on it. They wouldn't have to cut across the whole board and, and spread out their efforts among many, many different kinds of programs. The ARPA network has been criticized as not being typical of what's required for a real commercial network. Well, let's look at what present-day commercial networks do. First of all, they're only built by very big companies who can afford the expense of the design and the long lines and so forth. And secondly, they're built around special applications. This scheme of private purpose-built networks is, in my view, a completely false idea of what the future of data communication will be. It seems to me that data communication for a company must evolve in the same way that the company evolves. Um, organizations change, they merge, um, they introduce new services. The network experiment, to be successful, has got to include more than just the technology of getting computer A to talk to computer B. It's got to include the human institutions that will bring together these resources and people to solve real problems of real people. The processing and distribution technology and the storage technology are going to make it possible to get over onto a new technological base for intellectual efforts before our ponderous social processes will let us. I think more people ought to get in there and think about the social processes.